Hey, welcome back to phase three of the horse trailer mobile bar conversion. We're kicking this phase off with a cabinet situation that ended up being a total fail, but I'll share that with you later. I'm using half inch plywood to try to keep this light and assembling using wood glue, pocket holes, and pocket hole screws. Full details to all of my builds are included in the blog posts, which I will link for you below. In the previous floor plan, my client had a sink with a faucet, but she never used it, so she did not want that in the new floor plan. Instead, she wanted a small compartment to hold ice. So I had this genius idea of repurposing that sink for her ice container. Trash the faucet, just use the sink base. So I measured the length and the width of that sink to determine the dimensions for this cabinet. I essentially just have a left wall, right wall, bottom shelf, and middle shelf. Once the walls and shelves were assembled, I added a 2x3 to the top back for extra support. I attached this using wood glue and 2.5 inch wood screws going through the side of the cabinet directly into the 2x3. So this is where all my dreams died. I attached this front piece using wood glue and brad nails when I should have attached it with hinges so that it's a door that open and shuts. This way I could add a container under the sink drain so that after every event you can open the drain, wash out the sink, remove and dump that little container. But moving on. Here I'm cutting new slabs for the trailer doors and they really don't make another appearance until like the reveal phase. Okay, if you watched my video making a foldable bar, you already know what's happening here. This is quarter inch plywood that I'm ripping into four inch strips. And we're using this to create a design for the accent wall in the trailer. I made a vertical pencil line going up the middle of this wall, cut a 45 degree miter on one end of a four inch strip, lined that 45 degree miter up with my pencil mark down the middle and scribed or just used a pencil to mark where I needed to cut that opposite end. Once both ends were cut, I put a little wood glue on the back and attached to the half inch plywood wall using 5 8 inch brad nails. I'm using a scrap piece of quarter inch plywood as my spacer and just continued this process until the entire design was done. Now I needed to add a shelf to the center top of this wall. I used 3 quarter inch plywood for the shelf. It's hard to tell, but the accent wall is not flush with the trailer wall. There's a metal frame that makes it stick out about 2 inches. That's why I'm making the shelf support inset about 2 inches to accommodate that gap. Sometimes I find it helpful to shoot a couple of brad nails in before I start screwing to make sure that the shelf doesn't shift around, but ultimately I used wood glue and one and a quarter inch wood screws to attach these pieces. Here you can kind of see what I'm talking about when that shelf support is touching the accent wall, the shelf extends a little bit further back just to avoid things from falling into that gap. I used wood to metal screws to drill through the shelf support, through the accent wall, and directly into the metal frame. Next I added 3 quarter inch plywood trim around the shelf to make it appear bulkier. I attach this using wood glue and one and a quarter inch 18 gauge brad nails. Mm -hmm. 
Since the bottom of the shelf is hollow, it allowed me to add two wine racks underneath to increase storage. Now we get to move on to the floors. I got waterproof laminate flooring that has the click and lock installation. To start, I added a piece of quarter inch ply to the wall to act as my spacer, laid one full piece down, and then a second piece right next to it, marked on the back with a Sharpie where I needed to cut, and I found that my jigsaw was the easiest way to cut things to size. The glory of this floor is that it's literally just floating on your subfloor, so if things get crazy, you just unlock it and start over. I didn't have any of the little gadgets that make these types of insulations easier. I would probably recommend that for you just to make your life easier. I was guessing my way through it. I found it easiest to click an entire row together and then attach that to the row before it. So yeah, that big gap on the left side. I could have cut strips to fit into that space, but I had no idea how to make them lock into place. I figured I'll just compensate with trim and caulk. I had plenty of three quarter inch plywood on hand, so I decided to use that for the trim in this build. I installed the ice cabinet by drilling directly through that two by three support into the trailer frame. Prime and paint is coming up next, so I wanted to get everything in that was going to be painted white. This is a pressure treated 2x6 that I'm going to rest the bar countertop on. Before I started paint, I wanted to make sure that I got this circle cut in the platform for the U. There's an opening in that U, so this will be a lid that when you lift it up, you can just drop something down into a trash can that will be in the storage space. Okay, we've got an accent wall, a display shelf, an ice holder, we've got trim. Now we just need to fill in those huge gaps. And I did it with shoe molding. This is pre-primed pine that bends and maneuvers wherever you need it. This was just enough to close those gaps where caulk and paint can handle the rest. I used a piece of carpet trim to conceal where the floor starts right when you walk into the trailer and it cut very easily with my jigsaw and a blade meant for cutting metal. I attached it using wood screws, drilling down directly into the 2x6 boards that are on the very base of the horse trailer. I ripped quarter inch plywood into about one inch wide strips to attach to all of the exposed edges of plywood.
finished everything off with wood filler. Check back next week where we transform it with paint and start on the countertops. Thank you so much for watching.